When it comes to your career, there's only one question. Are you hard at work or hardly working? These dedicated and determined professionals are definitely going the extra mile when it comes to their work. Yet some people really risk their lives every single day, putting themselves in harm's way just to make a living. These courageous individuals face all kinds of dangers in their line of duty, knowing full well they could clock in for work and never clock out again. Pretty scary thought, right? From the repairman toiling at 12,000 feet to the firefighters jumping out of planes into the inferno waiting below. These are the 15 deadliest jobs in the world. You see like a small dark spot and that's where lightning has struck and then you can grind into it and look further and see how deep it goes. Honey Hunters one of the deadliest jobs in the world is also one of the most ancient. Gathering honey from wild bees is a dangerous career that could cost you your life, but that doesn't stop many communities from all over the world from embarking on this deadly mission. Experts believe that mankind has been gathering honey from wild colonies since 8000 BC, and people in Africa, Asia, Australia, and South America can still be seen making the perilous voyage to harvest honey from killer bees. Twice a year in Nepal, Brave teams of mountain men climb up the steep cliffs of the Himalayas in order to collect the sweet, delicious honey of the largest bee in the world. They've been doing this risky job for generations, climbing hundreds of feet into the mountains to carve out combs of hallucinogenic honey that can sell for six times the price of normal honey. If they lose their balance and slip while poking at these angry bees, they'll fall to their deaths. Generally, they'll put the bees to sleep by smoking them out so they can reach the so-called mad honey without getting stung all over. But that doesn't make this job any less dangerous. Oh, that must be some seriously tasty honey. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Shipbreakers of Bangladesh When giant ships come to the end of their lives, more than 90% of them will end up in India, Pakistan, or Bangladesh, where workers at humongous shipbreaking yards will tear apart the vessel for scrap metal and steel. The Chittagong Shipbreaking Yard in Bangladesh is the world's largest shipbreaking yard and employs a whopping 200,000 people to dismantle these enormous container ships. Half of all the steel in Bangladesh is collected here, and even though this work is vital, it's also extremely dangerous. In fact, a local watchdog claimed that at least one worker dies every week on the job while one person is injured every single day. We don't like those statistics. Yet breaking apart ships is seriously risky thanks to possible exposure to heavy metals, dangerous materials like asbestos, and what's said to be very unsafe working conditions. This back-breaking work involves smashing up steel using simple tools like hammers and blow torches, and it's been reported that staff will often work for six days a week, receiving as little as $300 a month for all their hard work. Several major shipping companies have even stopped using the services of these kinds of shipyards, even though their competitors charge a lot more money. Yeah, it's hard to believe that these perilous ship-breaking yards actually used to be tourist attractions. They were closed to the public due to safety concerns, but you actually used to be able to walk around and catch the ship-breakers in action. We hope everyone brought their hard hats. <laughs> China's sky-high repair workers. Nope, this isn't a circus act. This is just another day in the office for maintenance workers on the power lines in China except their office is thousands of feet in the air. Yet these courageous repair workers risk their lives every day in order to scale power transmission lines, walking along the wires as if they were tightropes. You definitely need a good sense of balance to do this job. These Chinese workers traverse across as many as 700 power transmission towers to carry out essential maintenance, reaching heights of up to 12,300 feet. We're dizzy just thinking about it. These ultra-high voltage power lines must be handled with the utmost care and precision, and only the most fearless and skilled workers are allowed to ascend up these electrical skyscrapers. Hey, at least the view is spectacular. There are definitely worse places to work than this. <laughs> Deep Sea Welders this deep-sea profession is officially one of the most dangerous jobs on Earth. These highly trained divers not only have to plunge to great depths to undertake their work, but they also need to be extremely skilled. Yet these underwater tradespeople are responsible for welding pipelines and offshore oil rigs, maintaining power stations and ships, and squeezing into tight places that even robots can't reach. Deep-sea welders can become seriously ill from working so deep under the water and even suffer from gas poisoning or electrocution. Let's face it, water and electricity have never been a great combination, yet you really need to know your stuff when you work such dangerous conditions. 
Luckily, there's some pretty awesome compensation for working in an industry that can literally cost you your life. These master welders can earn a phenomenal $1,500 a day, even raking in a remarkable $300,000 a year. Sure, it might be deadly, but deep sea welding sure is profitable. Mm -hmm. Smoke jumpers. Flying deep into remote forests and small aircraft, these smoke jumpers have the terrifying job of leaping out of a plane into wildfire below. This highly specialized job is one of the most demanding in the entire fire department and requires workers to be in peak physical condition as well as pass a series of psychological tests to prove they've got what it takes. Once they've been dropped at the location of the fire, a parachute full of food, water, and firefighting equipment is dropped by their side in order for the smoke jumper to survive in the burning woods for 48 hours at a time. The first ever smoke jump was made way back in the summer of 1940 at the Nez Pierce National Forest in Idaho, and the tradition has remained strong since then. Today, there are thought to be just 270 smoke jumpers qualified for active duty, proving just how difficult this intense work can really be. Can you see yourself jumping out of a plane and into a raging fire? Maybe you've got what it takes to be a smoke jumper. <laughs> Australian Sky Cowboys You've heard of helicopter pilots and you've heard of cowboys, but have you ever heard of this unique job? We're of course talking about Sky Cowboys, the dangerous but admittedly pretty awesome job that sees cattle wranglers take to the skies to herd their livestock. Gathering up cattle on the enormous ranches of Australia used to take around a month, but thanks to modern technology, thousands of cows can be wrangled in just a matter of days. But convenience comes at a cost. Flying a helicopter this low to the ground is often what pilots call the dead man zone, due to the fact that engine failure can result in an immediate crash to the ground, potentially injuring or even killing whoever's inside. Combine this with the fact that cattle can often lead you into the treetops and you've got a real recipe for disaster. Insurance for this super dangerous job is insanely expensive, with one rancher even claiming to pay over $40,000 a year to insure himself for $2.5 million. Whoa, this method of cattle wrangling is only for the bravest of souls. We think we'll stick to riding on horseback. What about you? Workers of La Rinconada This controversial mine in Peruvian Andes is one of the most dangerous places to work in the world. Located in the mountains at a whopping 16,700 feet above sea level, the La Rinconada mine is officially the highest permanent settlement on the planet. However, we think it's safe to say that there's a reason people don't usually live this high up, and that's because it isn't safe. This dangerous mine is abundant in gold and tens of thousands of workers moved here to try and cash in on the precious metal. However, this giant boom of people in the area made for pretty terrible living conditions. Without any plumbing or sanitation, it wasn't long before this miraculous mine became seriously mucky, not to mention the fact that the mountain is contaminated by toxic mercury seeping out from the mine. As many as 30,000 people moved here over eight years, but the quality of life didn't get much better as the days, weeks, and months rolled along. Even though the price of gold soared 235%, many miners were laboring without any pay and tried to strike gold for themselves on their days off. And being so high up in the mountains definitely takes its toll on the body. Hypoxia is a very real risk in La Rinconada, and the low oxygen levels can cause organ damage and other serious health conditions. But you know what they say, not all that glitters is gold. <laughs> Bush pilots. When you live in the most remote northern parts of Alaska and Canada, you come to rely on bush pilots for a lot of your basic essentials. Yet these brave pilots navigate the wilderness to deliver groceries, mail, medical supplies, and even pick up passengers that are cut off from the outside world by difficult terrain and impenetrable forests. However, these planes aren't like your average airlines. There's no business class on these tiny aircrafts. Pilots often have to fly in extreme weather conditions with low visibility, no safety not of air traffic controllers, and execute takeoff and landing on narrow makeshift airstrips that have been constructed in the middle of nowhere. Yet this is an extremely dangerous job, and if anything goes wrong, well, you could be on your own in the bear-infested woods for weeks at a time. Crashes are pretty common, and the state of Alaska alone experiences an average of 26 small aircraft accidents every year despite their relatively small population. If you ever find yourself on a push plane, you might want to fasten your seatbelt and hold on tight, because it could be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Safari Guides Imagine spending your whole day surrounded by some of the more deadly predators on our planet. 
Well, that's exactly what a safari guide has to do day in, day out. Often starting their day at the crack of dawn, a safari guide has to get up before 5.30 a.m. in order to get the show on the road. Driving tourists around in a special 4x4 Jeep or sometimes on foot, it's their job to make sure that excited guests actually get to catch a glimpse at dangerous animals like lions, leopards, hyenas, and hippos. Yet the safari guide actually seeks these creatures out and is also responsible for his group's safety as well. For this reason, these guides are trained in bush survival skills, as well as handling firearms and extensive first aid. Better safe than sorry. You wouldn't want to be caught off guard when it comes to a pride of hungry lions. A regular day in the office can involve trekking for millions in the hot sun, navigating bumpy roads and trails in your vehicle, and being able to answer all of your guests' burning questions about the African wilderness. Yeah, this job is no walk in the safari park. Storm Chasers most people run and hide from deadly tornadoes, but not the storm chasers. This incredibly risky job requires you to run towards danger, no matter where it may be. Yes, storm chasers travel the length and breadth of the country following huge storm systems, sometimes even crossing borders in order to keep tabs on the eye of the storm. Professional storm chasers will track extreme weather in order to report back to the authorities, and many will even be qualified in meteorological research. Yes, scientists have dangerous jobs as well, you know. Each year, the U.S. alone experiences as many as 1,253 tornadoes, and these courageous guys and girls are responsible for chasing twisters down and monitoring them. Driving in an armored truck encased in a steel roll cage, this vehicle is the only thing between them and the elements. In some cases, a tornado or hurricane can be powerful enough to send entire houses flying, so driving towards a twister in your car can be pretty petrifying. Of course, not all storm chasers get paid, and many people do it as a hobby, paying for their equipment and travel out of their own pocket. Sure, it's a strange pastime, but there's no denying that it's a real adrenaline rush. Hmm. Utility line workers. Back in the day, working online used to mean a different thing entirely. Yet line workers have been risking their lives since the 1890s, helping to build and repair electrical power transmission towers and telecommunication lines. Without them, we wouldn't be able to charge our phones, browse the web, or even switch on a light bulb. That's right, these brave tradesmen put themselves in harm's way every day, and line work was considered the most hazardous job that you could do back in the 1930s. Today, it's still one of the top 10 most dangerous professions based on annual fatalities, and around 30 to 50 workers in every 100,000 are killed while working every year. Risks include falling from hundreds of feet, burning themselves on live wires, and of course, electrocution. For this reason, workers have to wear special rubber uniforms to insulate them from live electricity. Line workers will train as apprentices, studying for years before they can begin this highly skilled and dangerous career path. They'll often have to venture up onto power lines during severe storms to try and get the city back on the grid, making sure that hospitals, schools, and homes stay up and running. And many line workers will injure themselves in the line of duty. It's even estimated that the fatality rate is twice that of police officers and firemen. Who knew? Line workers of the world, we salute you. Firefighters. What's the first job you think of when you imagine the most dangerous careers of all time? Probably a firefighter. These real-life superheroes are responsible for saving lives, protecting the public from deadly fires, and every so often, rescuing a cat from up in a tree. These incredible first responders take explosions, wildfires, and even life-threatening emergencies. Yet firefighters do it all. And in doing so, they put their own lives at risk, putting themselves in danger of severe burns, lethal smoke inhalation, and even being crushed by collapsing buildings. There's also long-term damage to think about. Conditions such as asthma, heart strain, and lung damage are a serious risk to the health of firefighters. Not to mention the fact that they work ridiculously long shifts, even sleeping at the firehouse. Yet 24-hour shifts are commonplace and firefighters always need to be ready to rush down that pole and jump into that truck. After all, fire never takes a day off. <laughs> Wind turbine technicians. It's one of the fastest growing professions in the United States and also one of the most deadly. Yet wind turbine technicians have an incredibly important job to do, keep the nation powered by renewable green energy. These highly trained technicians will climb hundreds of feet into the air to inspect, troubleshoot, and repair wind turbines, carrying extremely heavy tools and equipment with them. Some of these skyscraping turbines are even taller than the Statue of Liberty. Risks include falling from a great height, burning yourself in horrific arc flashes, and even dodging lasers of energy produced by the high-power transformers. 
Yeah, these things are so dangerous that one laser beam could actually cut a human in half. So much for clean energy. Deep sea fishermen. Have you ever stopped to think about where that fish on your plate came from? Chances are it was caught by a deep sea fisherman who risked his life to catch your salmon. Yeah, these fishermen, working in the deadly conditions of the rough seas surrounding Alaska, often work 20-hour shifts with only a couple of hours of daylight. When you're in the ocean, no one can hear you scream. These brave sailors will haul up nets and cages weighing hundreds of pounds, facing the risk of being swept overboard by a rogue wave or high winds. The decks on board these fishing vessels have been known to freeze over, causing even more dangerous conditions. Deep sea fishermen make up a third of all occupational fatalities in Alaska every year, and a whopping 117 per 100,000 fishermen died in 2012 alone. A study by Oxford University even found that people working at sea are 50 times more likely to die on the job than anyone else. So is it really worth it? Well, that depends on what you consider more valuable, your safety or cold hard cash. Yeah, these fishermen can earn as much as $50,000 in a three month period. Suddenly, this job doesn't seem so bad after all. Snake venom milkers. And now it's time for our final deadly job. Yeah, this petrifying profession is officially one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. That's right, snake milking is a real job, and it's absolutely nothing like milking a cow. That's because these brave-hearted professionals are actually milking venom from the fangs of poisonous snakes, all in the name of producing anti-venom. Yeah, these workers are risking their lives in order to save lives. It's a pretty noble thing to do when you think about it. Experts estimate that anywhere between a million and five million bites occur every single year across the globe, and each one of those wounds could need a life-saving dose of anti-venom. Snake venom milkers work in their offices, also known as serpentariums, handling live snakes every day in order to extract this valuable and essential fluid. Imagine waking up each day, then putting your fingers that close to a snake's sinister fangs. You'd need nerves of steel. Some people spend their lives working at a desk, but others have to risk life and limb just to make a living. Yet the world is full of dangerous jobs, but someone's got to do them. Which one of these jobs would you risk it all for? You can let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. You can also hit subscribe for more awesome Missing Files content. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.